Welcome compadres. Today we're going to continue on the petroleum economic theme and put a price value on acreage. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate net present value per acre using gas production decline data using the radio flow interpretation that we worked through in a previous video. This is pretty neat stuff. So guys, let's get to it. We're going to use the same gas production we used previously. Here it is. As you can see, we have our total gas produced, our time in days, our rate, and we have very sporadic time intervals, which makes this difficult to actually calculate a net present value, but we can still do it if we model it with equations rather than taking in the actual production data. So that's kind of what we're going to do today. If you remember, we calculated net present value using a rate time interpretation and we actually got MPV at different discount rates. We got an IRR. We also got AVP, profit to investment ratio, and payout. So we're going to do the same process for our reciprocal rate radio flow interpretation. So I'm what I did is I copied this formulas over to here. This is our radio flow interpretation. This is what it looks like. If you remember, we fit a straight line portion to the early time data which simulates the infinite acting radio flow region where we assumed constant pressure production or constant bottom hole pressure uh, production. And then we fit it with a straight line and then we fit the remaining to the right of this point. This is the time to the end of radio flow with ARPS equations. So this represents the boundary dominated region. So that's what we're looking at today. If you don't remember or don't have a clue what this is, uh, I should be showing a video up here. You just click on that and, and get up to speed on what we're doing here. But this is the interpretation we're going with today. And we're going to do the exact same stuff we did in the, the last video when we calculated net present value for rate time. But we're going to have to model it a little bit differently. So to cut to the chase, I've already written the function. It's called EUR discount factor radio flow. Okay, so it takes arguments of interest rate. So we have an annual interest rate here. I want you to just keep that as it is. Then this is because we're fitting our graph here with two lines. We have to take in variables for both lines. So this is the infinite acting line. This is the boundary dominated fit right here. So what we're doing is this is the initial rate at the end of radio flow or at this point right here. This is our, our rate at this point is what we're looking at. So if you remember we actually showed here going through, through this interpretation we calculate or we had solver determine our time produced to the end of radio flow at 200. So right here the we calculated our rate at this point so at 200 days that's going to represent our QI at the end of radio flow. We also calculated an instantaneous decline at the end of radio flow. And I want you to freeze these. And then a B boundary dominated. Freeze that as well. So that those are the parameters that our ARPS equations took into account. Now the early time or the infinite acting region is going to take a, uh, a uh, intercept. It's also going to take a slope. And I want you to freeze these because we're going to jump it down and then time produced to the end of radio flow. And also an economic rate or an economic limit. Which we're assuming this. So if we freeze that, bang. So we returned. I didn't copy that over the first time, but what we returned is the same stuff we did in the last video. Production discount factor, a life of the well in days, and an estimated ultimate recovery. And we'll go into the code to determine how this was calculated. So if we carry this down, we can calculate net present value at different interest rates.
So you can see here's our net present value and the associated interest rate. Obviously, as we increase the interest rate, our net present value is going to go down. And if you recall, our net present value equation, we basically just used our cumulative production EUR. We multiplied it by the discount factor, and then we multiplied it by a net revenue price, and then we subtracted the operating costs, which we assume are constant. And then we subtracted out the drilling and completions costs, but if you remember, we had to discount our operating cost. That was all covered in the last video, so you can go look at that. So there we have it. We have net present value. And then we can calculate an IRR as well. If we copy that function down, remember IRR is occurs where our net present value equals zero. So if we go to Solver, you want to go to the Data tab, Solver, and you want to go select set the objective which is going to be our MPV value by changing the interest rate our IRR solve it and we get a solution so that's our IRR and so this is same old same old. okay so here's where the value comes in for this interpretation if you remember we were able to get reservoir characterization parameters using this exact interpretation one of the things we got was drainage area we actually got permeability skin original gas in place and we got a drainage area now we can put a price value on acreage and calculate net present value per acre in this case we're going to use the net present value at 12 percent or a discount rate of 12 percent we're going to divide that by 82 acres and there we have it that's our price of acreage so if we were to go um, out to the field and, and we were looking at prospects around this well we would suspect that we would be making six thousand and fifty eight dollars per acre of land that we buy of course you know you have to have a good interpretation and also you may have different wells in the area and, and uh, you have to take those interpretations into account but you could actually go and, and put these values on a heat map of different wells and try to locate the hot areas so that's pretty cool um, that was the value of using this radio flow interpretation and when I say radio flow um, I think some people get confused but I'm assuming a cylindrical drainage area so this is not horizontal wells uh, this interpretation over here is and we'll actually go step through and, and show you how to calculate net present value of this and you can put a price value on acreage in the future but yeah that's it guys that's that's really the value of this interpretation we couldn't do this with rate time or rate cumulative because we can't get reservoir characterization parameters from these two interpretations but from the radio flow interpretation we can and we can actually get everything we did over here and, uh, and an additional t uh, metric right here net present value per acre so that's it guys so we're gonna actually I'm gonna go step into the code uh, to show you how this was done and uh, it'll be posted to the website but here we go let's go step into the code To determine our net present values, I needed to write a function to determine our production discount rate, our life of the well in days, and also our EUR. So to do that, I wrote a function called ER discount factor radio flow. And it takes several arguments um, that are represented by this picture right here. So to get those numbers we had to model this situation so we had to take into account the straight line portion the infinite acting radio flow and also the ARPS region and boundary dominated so this function right here the way it was written is it took in arguments for those two functions and they're defined right here it takes into account an annual discount rate 
the initial rate at the end of radial flow, which is at the beginning of the ARPS region or the boundary dominated, the initial decline rate at the beginning of boundary dominated flow, B boundary dominated. It also takes our slope of our straight line region. So if you look at this equation, it took our slope of our straight line region and then our intercept, reciprocal rate intercept, and then it takes the time produced to the end of radial flow represented by this triangle because this is our turning point when we go from infinite acting to boundary dominated and it takes an economic limit rate so that we know where to stop. So the first thing is I converted our interest rate to a daily interest rate because we're dealing with data represented in days. And then to determine the life, it's pretty simple. You can use ARPS equations and also the time produced at the end of radio flow, which is this point. You add those two together, the infinite acting one, and then the boundary dominated one, and you get your life. Uh, this is just a simple equation. Um, I think I've shown it before. The next step is to calculate a production discount and also an EUR. So to do this step, wrote a for loop that starts at a time of one and then goes to the life to the end of life of the well and so this first point right here because we have two functions uh, we actually have a discontinuous graph or model and so you have to think in those terms so if the time is less than the time produced to the end of radio flow we're in the infinite acting region right and so that's I use our straight line portion which is right here and then I take the reciprocal of that to calculate a rate and then I discount it at that time interval and then I add up that rate since it's a daily rate we can just add the rates together to get our cumulative at each time step that's what we did here and then once we go beyond in this for loop once we are beyond the time produced to the end of radio flow, then we're in ARPS. So now we have to go back to ARPS equations. And so we calculate an ARPS rate right here. And if you remember, I talked about in the in an earlier video, when we go from infinite acting to ARPS, we have to restart our time interval. So ARPS equations, we got to start at time zero. So we take our time produced at the end of radio flow, and we essentially subtract that from our total time at whatever time step we are so that we can zero it in and then begin to uh, calculate our, our rate at that time t. If that doesn't make sense go back to the previous video but or watch this one a couple of times I think you you can figure it out and then we continue to discount our EURs and then we continue to add up our EURs to calculate a new cumulative. So we go from left to right, infinite acting, and then we change over, convert to ARPS, and then we go ahead and continue to calculate our cumulative EUR and discount, a production discount factor. So that's pretty straightforward. And then this function returns those two values, or actually three values, our production discount rate right here, our life and days and then our cumulative EUR and that returns that array and that's the end of the function but we did have to make some function calls up here um, we had to call our rate time life so up here a rate time life is right here it takes these arguments we pass it in here and this is the function to do that it's just simple ARPS equations you can find it in a textbook or uh, go back and look at my previous videos and also this is our reciprocal rate straight line which we used right here we took the inverse of that to get our rate of our infinite acting region and then lastly our ARPS rate which is either going to be exponential or hyperbolic depending on what your B value is and we use that right here to calculate our ARPS rate and that's it that's all we did guys um, pretty simple that's the code um, 
you know, watch it a couple of times, go through it a couple of times, maybe three times, and I think you can make sense of it. But that's how it was done. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Adios.